Once again, good morning, everyone. Good happy, morning. happy Sabbath. Um, I pray that we all been having a blessed week. I know I've been with the things that the Lord. Now I want to believe that everyone is as well, with um the thoughts that the Lord's been sharing with us. And Amen. well, my prayer is that we're we're God's word is always beautiful. You know, it's, there's never a time where God's word is not beautiful. It's it, you know the the um the Bible says God is good, so every word in the word of the Lord it's good. It's always a good thought. And he says, my thoughts are not your thoughts, um, for his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. You know, and the, a nice thought the Lord brought to mind with that is a ladder. The Jacob's ladder is just a higher thought. Every round is just a higher thought. And, and as, we climb that, as we climb Jacob's ladder, our thoughts are growing. And as we grow in thought, God hopes that we grow one day when we come up to the stature of where God is. You know, leaving this earth and going up to heaven. So every day... We're supposed to rise higher and higher up Jacob's ladder. We're, what all sin is, we were speaking about it this morning. Sin just hates a knowledge of God. Sin doesn't want a knowledge of God. Sin, sin just wants no God. That's really sin. Just don't want God not to be. But, um, and, but life is knowing God. So the Lord wants us to know that in knowing him, that's when we obtain and that's when we have life. So as we go through this study, um, looking into life and death, which is life just means knowledge and death means the absence of knowledge because Christ says this is life eternal that they might know. So to have life is to have knowledge. So to, to die is to be without knowledge. You, you, you have no more ability or capability to ever learn about the, the living God ever again. And we don't want to reach such a state in, in our life. Christ has given us the privilege of, of learning about God and developing an attitude and a character where we will learn about him for all eternity. Um, but we're going to we're going to look into this topic of um, life and death. Um, we read them from this book called the day of the, the atonement. It's called the atonement. But before we begin, let us open up with a word of prayer. We're going to start somewhere. Amen. Before we begin, nice little thought that the Lord was sharing before coming up, you know, as I was considering some of these things and, and pondering what the Lord really wants us to understand here at the end of the world. When we look around us, you know, today is a Sabbath day. This is what we this is what the Lord has given us, a seventh day Sabbath. If I, but if I was to ask us, you know, what what is a day? What what does a day mean to us? What is a day? What, how does the Lord want us to view every day? I don't expect y'all to probably get the answer I'm getting, but I, I just want to see where our minds is. is it, say it again. It's a point in a period. Yes, it is. I can't hear you. Yes, a day does teach us about life or death. That's why we have sunrise and sunset. A man's life rise at his birth and a man dies when the sun goes out. His life goes out. That is, that's what a day teaches us. Amen. It's a it's an allotted time to do a certain work. You can only do that work in that day. Amen. And all those points are connected to exact. It's summed up in one thing. One word sums up everything that was just said. It's a day of grace. It's a day of grace. Amen. So the Bible says the day of grace. The and uh, and what what comes first? The the evening or the morning? All right. So the types came first, and then the anti-type came second. That's the morning. And Christ came in the morning. 
And he came to give us the, the real grace, you know, that the types, the, the types is only there to teach us about that. Amen. Um, anything else? All of that is summed up in one word still. It, it is an atonement. A day is an atonement, actually. It's called a day of atonement. Amen. So every day that we live is actually teaching us about the atonement. Uh, anything else? One word sums all of that up, even the atonement. A day is an experience. That's all a day is. It's just an experience. Every time you go to sleep at night, it's the close of one experience, and, it's the, and the next day is the beginning of a new experience. Amen. And the sun measures this experience, and the sun watches over this experience, and the sun records this experience. Amen. Is everyone following? That's all it is. It's just an experience. A day is an experience. So why am I saying that? The sunlight lets us know when the next experience begins and when one experience ends. That's what sunlight does. So the Word of God is our light. The Word of God is our sun. And, and God's word, the, the, the message for the time lets you know what experience the church should be in at this point in time. So the light, the light that God sends, it allows us to know where in our experience is man in relation to his life at this point in, in time. So the light God sends, it makes us aware of the, the experience we should be having. So whatever light he sends, the experience from that point on is what the church is going to experience when that light comes. That's what it's going to experience. And everything that opens up, that's just going to be the experience. So let's turn to Revelation 22 um, to, to prove some of this point. Revelation 22. How does the Lord like to teach us? The Lord loves this method of teaching. Because Christ, when Christ came, he couldn't... He, he, for, say it again. That's it. Christ loves to teach in figures and symbols. He made this planet of figures and symbols because he loved to teach us this way. He loved to reveal himself to us in this manner. The Bible says when Christ come, he was going to speak in parables. He enjoys to, to reveal himself through, through, through means like this. This is the medium he likes to use to talk to us as, as human beings. And one of the reasons that he does that is to show us that he's a reasonable God and he made us to be reasonable people. And, and when we look at these things, um, the Lord wants us to use our reason and mind to come to, to come to arrive at certain conclusions um, that will help us in life and that will help to guide us in our experience at the point in which we are in that point in time. So everything around us when the light comes is designed to help us and help the church in that experience so that they can come to a logical end, that they can come to a peaceful conclusion. And what does sin does? It robs men in that time of experience of knowing what the Lord is doing at that time. It takes away his knowledge or his ability to discern in the hour in which he's living what he needs to know at that time. And here's our loving God made sure that when the church reached the experience, the government is going to bear witness to the experience. The people are going to bear witness to the experience. Everything he's made is going to bear witness to the experience that we should be having so that no one's without excuse as to what they should be learning at the time in which they're living. Mm -hmm. Is everyone following? Mm -hmm. Because God is the son. The son governs man's experience. Because God governs man's experience. The experience we should be having that day, God governs it. And he makes sure everything in that time fits the experience that we should be having. This is why we can link COVID to, 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 to Genesis. And we can link this to that. And we can link this to this. Because that's the experience we should be having at the time in which we're living. So when you go to Revelation 22... Can I have a reader for verse 10, 11, and 12? Revelation 22, 10, 11, 12. And he saith unto me, Fear not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according to his work shall be. All right. You know, when Swin and I, we were coming from Jamaica, we was talking about this morning, and I'm glad that it came up because I, I love the thought the Lord had brought. I was on the plane coming back, and I was reading that verse, those verses, and, you know, then the thought just flashed some into my mind. We're really at the end of the world. We are really living in the end of the world. This is, this is it. Christ is really coming in our time. We're not, we're not waiting for thousands of years like the church thought they were. And when Christ wasn't coming the second time, the church always tried to bring about the second coming before the second coming. But when, the, when God's people finally reach that experience, it's almost like the second coming is not real to anybody anymore. So no one's not even looking for the second coming. 
even though the Lord is going to design their experience to look like the second coming. Amen. They're not looking for it anymore. They're not concerned about it anymore. They're unconcerned. They stop watching. Even though they can stop watch, he made 9-11 look like the second coming. He made COVID look like the second coming. He made 1989 look like the second coming. He made the bank failure look like the second coming. He made all of our experience from 89 to this point is to show us we're living in a time when Christ is going to come. Anytime light shines for your time is to show the church where the church is in relation to his experience. The experience the church should be having, that's the light that's going to correspond with it at that time. Just like the natural sun and just like a natural day. It's the same thing. Is everyone following? Amen. Amen. So in there, it says, he that is unjust. You know, and I was like, what does that mean? This, this unjust, when you look it up, one of his meaning is um, contrary to that which is right. So he that is contrary to that which is right, let him remain that way still. And he that is in agreement with what is right, let him remain that way still. And then it says, he that is righteous, he that love to do what God says is right, let him remain that way still. And he that is unrighteous, he that loves to do what God says is not right, let him remain that way still. So we've reached a point in history when man is going to come to a place where wherever their state of mind is for that day, they're going to die. That's how they're going to die. They're going to die with that state of mind for the rest of their existence, pretty much. All their existence. So we're living in a time where what how we're developing our minds matters more than any time in the history of this world. This is where it really matters because it's while we're alive, we're going to be in a depth state or a living state Amen. while we're alive. You're going to be alive with the, with the ability never to think a right thing again. You're going to be alive never with the ability to do a right thing again. You can only do wrong from this day forward and you can only do right from this day. That's the real life and the real death we're about to experience. Is everyone following? Yeah. That's close of probation. When probation closes, you will never have the ability to do a right thing ever again if you're on the unjust side. Unjust means justice. You will never desire justice. You will hate justice for the rest of your time on earth until Jesus comes. Or you'll be just. You'll love justice and you'll desire justice and you will never know what unjust is like anymore because that's taken from you. You don't have the, Ellen White says they'll be try to call up sins and they can't bring it back. Why? Because Christ says, no, you're going to remain this way for all eternity. You're not going to be able to call up your past sins anymore or remember the unjust thing that, no, because Christ already blocked that out of the records of history. The sun has burnt that history up and you're not going to live that way anymore. This is the time we're living in. So if what I'm saying is right, then the experience the world should be having, not just the church, the experience the world should be having should fit the explanation. And that's what we just went over yesterday. 1989, what did we see? They connected themselves with the papacy. Death. All things wrong. All things wrong. So what is America doing from that point on? All things wrong. All things wrong. They think they're doing it right, but no, they're going to do wrong. They come to 96 and they think, the best, they, they think the best way to deal with terrorism is to make a law that restricts our civil liberty and so that we can deal. No, that's the wrong conclusion you can come to. The best defense for terrorism is actually to uphold the Constitution. If you uphold the Constitution, you're actually dealing with terrorism because the Constitution was designed to deal with terrorists. That's what it was designed to deal with. It keeps the, ter the real terrorists, which is the papacy, out. This is the real terrorists. It keeps them out. So if you just lift up the Constitution, you wouldn't have this problem. And then you come to 9-11. Death to information, how, how, to go, how do they, we perceive freedom of information, all of these things. No, what's the best thing to deal with information? The Constitution. If you just uplift the Constitution, which God has given the Constitution to be America's life. If America abides by this Constitution, it will continue to, life will continue to be preserved freedom in this nation. Go ahead. Freedom of information allows you to know who is in Christ and who is in Satan. All the time. Amen. But when you put laws against the spreading of information, it just sends people on the ground. Amen. So it, yes. Evil, Amen. And you don't know who's Amen. Evil. It makes them high. Yeah. And then you come down to the financial institution, death to that system. So you could just walk right down through our line, and the line from 1989 to where we are is in agreement with the light for this time. And what am I saying? When you go through the book of Revelation, you know, which I want to encourage us to do that, in order to really prove that verse, 
Revelation 22.10, where it says, unseal the sands of the prophecy of this book. In order to really confirm that what, what we say in regards to this is right, we really have to go through that book and actually see what was in this book that was sealed up. So I wasn't able to read it, but I was able to listen to it. So I listened to the entire book of Revelation and literally, literally, the only thing that was sealed up in that book was in Revelation 10. That, that's it. That was, that was the only thing that was sealed up in that book. So what am I saying? The Lord made sure that the history just before the close of probation, everyone can plainly understand it. It doesn't matter. If you don't know anything about what we teach, it, yes, it is your fault. Just go read that chapter and then actually read through the book because Christ said so. He says, blessed is he that read it. So actually read through that book. And as you read through that book, you come to chapter 10. And it says, seven thunders uttered their voices. And John says, doing what he was told to do. John, in the beginning, he was told to write the things which he had seen and, and, to, and, uh, and, and um, the things which are, the things the things which was and the things which are to come. So John heard the seven thunders and following the command, he's about to write what he heard, what he saw and what's about to come. But the angel said, no, 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 no. <coughs> seal up the sands of the seal up the sands that the seven thunders uttered and write them not. And then you read on from 10 to 11. Nothing about it being unsealed. And you read to 12. Nothing about it being unsealed. 13, 14, all the way down to 22. And then you come to that verse and then it says, See, unseal the sands of the prophecy of this, this book. Well, if you read through that book, then immediately your mind went, well, the only thing that was sealed up was what he told John to, to seal up, which was the seven thunders. So whenever I come to a point where the seven thunders is unsealed, it's going to be about the experience that the church was having in that history. So whenever I come to a point in, in my experience where that history is now the main focus in, Advent, in, in the world's history, then the seven thunders is unsealed. Well, what is? Why is it being unsealed? Because the very next verse says, "The time is at." The, the verse says, "The time is at hand," and then it tells you what's at hand: the close of probation. So just before the close of probation, the mindset of God's people is, "We're about to usher in a new eternal experience." That's where we are. A final change. The 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 the, the change of all changes. This one is no reversing to this change. Because a person died today and we go to sleep today and we get to wake up tomorrow and begin a new experience. But this change, no, you, you go to sleep, you go to sleep. You, 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 however you slept, you're not getting back up. Is everyone following? No. Whatever, state you, whatever state you're found in, when Christ closes probation, that's the state you will be in for all eternity. That's just the state you're going to be in. So the fact that we're living in that time that means the light that's coming to us now is in relation to those verses. Because prior to that, nobody couldn't understand it really. They couldn't really understand it like how we're understanding it. Ellen White, they put those things in place for us because we're actually, she gave the, the, the first part, uh, all of the pioneers, and they gave the first part to the close of probation. But we're actually dealing with the last part to it. We're actually going to learn what men are going to experience when they, when, they, when they come to that. She says her pen couldn't describe it. No, she tried her best the to describe it. Life. The Lord is going to give life to what they wrote. Yes, amen. Um, judgment of the dead. So amen. What they wrote was based on the dead, and now we're, we're approaching the judgment of the living. So the Lord is going to awake what they wrote in a new way because he's giving life to it. He's giving life to it, and but it's for us now. It's for us. Yeah, it's for us. So I just want us to see that before we read this article. Of Now we're going to go into the article. Um, and we, uh, we're going to take turns reading it. I'll probably start on my left side. Um, we can go around and hopefully, um, if we all got to read, if we didn't get to read it, that's fine. Um, but, um, we're going to read it, this article. And if you have the notes, I probably made some pointers in there with the notes and I'm going to ask, um, when you get to that, just read that part. Cause I won't be able to, to see it there. The, the part, the, the parts that I added in there, but if you read it, and you have some thoughts that you want to bring out, please share those thoughts as well, because this is this kind of setting. So um, that's that's OK with everyone. Yeah. All right. Amen. So we're going to read this. It's a wonderful little book um, written by one of the trees in our garden, Stevenson, um, The Atonement. We want to encourage every, everyone to read it because it, it is it is connected to the Day of Atonement. He wrote it because it was in relation 
to the atonement, um, to the day of atonement, something that we need to understand. And he's going to talk about the nature of man, the nature of God's law, and, and, and our relation to, to, to God's law. And we're going to come to a point that's going to probably, we're going to probably, not probably, hopefully all of us, we're going to learn something new about Genesis 2, verse 16 and 17 that I learned new. And it's also, when we get there, we'll talk about it more. But can we begin to read and please? We're going to start with the same one we stopped at last night. No, not, it's, it's 18, yeah. So we'll begin left and just, y'all can see the order of how you'll go. I can't really. <coughs> yes. You scroll down to, he said 18. Loud and clear, please. Right. <clears throat> but what relation to Adam's posterity is shown to this penalty? Are they exposed to the same death? Answer. They are. To this, the whole scriptures bear testimony. The decree has never been repealed that thus thou art and thus thou shalt return. Mar uh, mark the doom of Adam's immediate posterity. They shared their father's fate. The record reads thus, and all the days of Seth were 912 years, and he died. And all the days of Enoch, Enoch were 905 years, and he died. And all the days of Cain Ken, were 910 years, and he died. And all the days of that. Eight hundred ninety and five years, and he died. And all the days of Jared were nine hundred and sixteen and two years, and he died. And all the days of Methuselah were nine hundred and nine years, and he died. Yes. Okay, so the point is, everybody has to die. Yep. Once Adam and Eve sin, everyone that is ever lives in this, earth, this world is appointed to death. But the close of probation is a point where we're going to see as we go along, this is where man is going to actually see what death really is. The Lord delayed something in relation to death. We, we're going to go through this as we go along. By, by go. pronouncing death upon the, the, the body, he, he gave man an opportunity to see what death is. Yes, like. amen. That he would desire what? Life. life. Mm -hmm. That he would desire life. That, that this is the reason for probation. Probation is given to man. Death is a slow process. And while we are dying, the Lord gave us this probation and this slow process of death that we might desire life. Because consciously, if we reason, everything is going to the grave. Everything ends in the grave. And, and the gospel is designed to say, look, there is a life beyond the grave. There is a life outside of the grave, but the only life outside of this grave is accepting this gospel. Christ says, if, except you believe that I am he, you shall die in your sins. So if we don't believe that Christ is here, if the gospel is true, then we're going to die in that state or that condition that we that we find ourselves in. Now we're going to explain a lot of things because then what's the reason for the second death if man dies? And what what's the reason for that? Mm -hmm. what, 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 is, what is that there for? Because Christ purchased a second probation, then it, it, all of that ties together. But we'll, go, we'll see as we go along. A a amen, a second life. Amen. Mm -hmm. Next one, please. Prosperity and joy. Prosperity and joy. Wherefore, as 
that one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Not that all have sinned after they sin loosely in Adam's transgression, but by all three Adam have all of sin. What did he say? All have sin. Adam sinned personally, whereas his posterity sinned by proxy. That's the last part of it? No. Okay. Adam being the representative of the entire human race as a natural consequence entails his own nature and destiny upon all his posterity. Having therefore incurred a mortal, corruptible, dying nature, he entails the same nature upon the generation proceeding from him. Of course, he could give his children the better nature than him. Huh? That which he himself possessed. Again, the same apostle says, for, in, for as in Adam all die, yeah, I won't, it's later on. Yeah. All mankind suffer the penalty threatened Adam in the Garden of Eden. Enoch and Elijah are accepted and the righteous living at the, at the advent of our blessed Redeemer will be exceptions to this statement. Unless those do, and they will be, uh, they will undergo, and these will undergo a change equivalent to death. Who dare say they did not, and their deeds were? Okay, that's that's the mystery part that we're still trying to. They have to pass through something, yeah, because all died. And but I, what I want us to see, though, and hopefully we, we we're seeing some of these things. We're all subject to Adam's penalty, which was death. Even though we, but what are we subjected to our own selves? Not, not that, the things we did after that, because we're going to receive the, we're going to, but our own sins. We also have to answer to those things. That's not answered, yeah, that's not answered in that one. That's for Adam's crime. So we got to answer for our own crime. But in order to answer for our crime, we must first pay Adam's penalty. And then we're going to need a what? A second life to do what? To pay for our own crime. Yes, yes. Is everyone following? Yeah, what's, what's nice okay. about that? I like this thought. Because when you go back in Genesis, it, it said to Adam, be fruitful and multiply. Because of that, that, that command, Christ could not have um, let those that have come after be, be, be susceptible to what Adam did. Amen. They only came after, after. as a result of the command, yep. they had, be fruitful and multiply. They, had no, they couldn't control that. Yes, no, they couldn't control yeah. that because the command went forth to Amen. be fruitful. And so they gotta fulfill it. Christ had to do something to Amen. give them, Amen. Up to give all those that come after Adam an opportunity to choose life. And what did Christ give us? A second probation. Yeah. He gave us an opportunity to escape the second death. That's nice. To escape the second pun because the, the second punishment is to pay for the penalty in your life. Adam, we're paying for Adam's penalty in this life. That, that it's not Adam was natural, so it has to be a natural death. So has to be a natural death. But because we the Lord the Lord froze the penalty so that we like Swinness says so that we can choose life. This is the second probation. Because we are born, we didn't we don't, we don't get to choose. Amen. Yeah, it's already chosen for us. Sin, it's shaping in iniquity. Amen. That, we don't get to choose. Amen. So Christ came, he took that death, Amen. and he says, Okay, Amen. choose life. Amen. And what's the sign that you accepted the first punishment and you and you escaped the second death? What's what Huh? What What did the Lord put in place to show that we that we escaped the second death? Baptism. Baptism. When you get baptized, you're acknowledging, I choose this, and I want to escape that. Yes, it's life or death to be. Y'all Yes, I want to escape the second one. I choose the life of Christ. I choose His righteousness so that I will be exempt from the second death. So if we don't get baptized, we waive our right. To the life of Christ. We waive it. No. We said, Lord, we don't want your second probation. We want this life. Well, okay, you want this life? Well, you're going to want the second life. That one is going to come to you whether you want it or not. Yeah, yeah it's going to come whether you want it or not. But I'm giving you an opportunity for that one not to come upon you by choosing Christ. Choose him. And then that one will have no power over you because it had no power over Christ. Go ahead. 
that's why it's important to be baptized in the right message. Amen. Absolutely. By the right people. Am, yes, praise God. That's something the Lord has been showing us lately. John the Baptist. The yeah. right people must baptize you. This is the Amen. Of organization. Amen. Because organization puts the right people in place. Amen. People from the right baptism. Amen. The right message. And until the church have a knowledge of who's the right people with the right message, they, they can't be baptized. Because you, Amen. you don't know what you're getting baptized into. Can I, I'm going to add to what Swindon said. Is heaven the right place? Yeah. Does heaven has the right things in place? Yeah. Does heaven know what standard people need to meet in order to be baptized? Is it different on earth? No, no. It's not supposed to be. It's supposed to be the same. So as it's in, as it's in heaven, it must be on earth. So that heaven is an organized place. So there must be an organization down here. And there must be a standard that heaven has that must be down here so that men can see that same standard. So when we get baptized, we know the requirements. Amen. Yeah. And you've really now entered into the, the role in heaven. As it are not at the times of this ignorance, if we didn't know that before, that's we didn't know that before. Heaven will still accept that because you didn't know. But now that the Lord is making us knowledgeable of this step, we can't live under that ignorant state anymore. So if we were baptized under that ignorant state and we come under the understanding of the correct way of baptism, we have to be re what? Baptized. baptized. Because you're, you now have a correct understanding. So if we haven't been baptized, and those watching, if you haven't been baptized, it's a very important step to take. Because if you don't take it, you're not going to escape the second death. Mm -hmm. baptism, is the, baptism is the place where God's people come. So that one, the wrath of God, doesn't abide on us. But the life that Christ gets, that's what we're going to receive. Mm -hmm. That's the importance of baptism. Amen. But, but there, amen. That moment, from that moment on. Yeah. So then what's the reason for this one? God can't take away the first death. He can't. He can't take it away because he says the day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. That's a command that must be carried out. He can't remove it. This is why Christ don't come to save us from this life. He comes to give us the power to live in this life the right way and escape the second one. Is everyone following? This life is appointed to everybody. This is the cross we have to bear in this life. Yeah, because yes, we have to bear. This is the one that Christ says, take my yoke upon you. Because my burden, this choice that I've given you to live in this life with all of his woes and perplexities and ups and downs and twistings and turns in, this is the only cross I'm asking you to bear. As an example, he took on flesh. Yeah, he took on flesh. I just want you to bear this life. Yes, there's, yes, there's going to be, you're going to have money to pay your rent today and all of a sudden you wake up tomorrow, there's no money to pay your rent. That's the cross. Bear it. Bear it. Yes, you have a car that's working today and then you wake up tomorrow, the car stops working. That's the cross. Bear it. You don't want the other one where your car stops working forever or you have no house forever or you don't have it. You don't want that iron yoke. You want this wooden yoke, this easy one. This is the easy. This life is really actually easy with Christ. Amen. Only with Christ can this life be easy. I really pray I, we can come to a point in our minds where we really look at life like that. I really do pray for that, where we can wake up every day and no matter what comes, you know what, Lord, this is easy. This is really easy. I. Yes, I don't. I, I hate this condition I'm in, but I have to. Lord, this is easy. You know, this is what this is the lot. I have to bear this cross because I don't want the other one where there's no sight for all eternity. We don't want that one. We don't want that second. That that's that's for those who don't accept Christ in this life. Go ahead, Rashad. Yeah, that makes um, it brings more understanding to to why the Lord said it's easier for the camel to go into the, high, the eye of a needle mm. than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Amen. Because the rich man is making their their first life yeah. their second life. Oh, man. The first life is easy. And so by by accepting this first life of ease, they're rejecting the second life of ease, with ease when you're in the kingdom. So what do they do? What you just showed me there. They're having their prodigal son experience. Amen. All the blessing that they should get in, in, in the, the world to come, they want it naturally now. now. And if you receive it all now, then you've, you've taken all the resources that you should have got then. So the Lord can't give you it then because you, you spent it all up in this life. That's why it's better to be in poverty now, Amen. which is your cross, Amen. than to, than to, to, to <coughs> the wrath that is to come later and, later, and then don't uh, benefit from, from the things of the, of the kingdom. Amen. I, I praise God for the thoughts that have come in, and, and I want to add to that another point to, to what he just said, what Shad just said. What we're learning, I know that the Lord is leading here, because this is the evidence that we have to show people that there really is a second life and a second death. 
by coming to these conclusions, people will begin to see, you mean we're going to have to live again and die again? Yes, if you're wicked, you're going to have to live again and die again. But if you're righteous in this life, you get to live in this life and live in the other life. You won't die again because a second death, the, the, the fact that we're alive now, it proves there's a second death. That's what this is trying to show us. The fact we're alive is proving that, man, there, there's a real second death. But then who's that one for? All of those who made wrong use of the first life. All who's made wrong use of this life, the second death is for that class of people. But all who've made right use of this life, the second eternal life is for that class of people. You know, this text comes home because it says, as in Adam, all men die. It says so in Christ. How many live? All. Uh, amen. And wicked. Amen. It doesn't matter. Christ purchased resurrection. Yes. Amen. For everyone. everyone. But he's got to reward them. But he has to reward yeah. them for how they use the same In this life. He gave them. Amen. The second probation he gave. How did we use it? So we're already paying for Adam's first penalty. We live and we die. That's it. We live and die. But how did we live in the time of the second probation? That's what the second death is for. That, that's the deal with that class. But we can escape it in this life. Next. So, so just like with those that were in the, um, the 1260, they weren't held accountable for the light that came after 1798. So, so with this, if they, if for those... Yeah, they can't be punished for it. They can't be punished yeah. for it. So even those who came and died before the light of 89... They, if they lived the the, if they carried the cross that they have and held up to all the light that the Lord um gave them unto them, then they are also not held accountable for the light that came after eighty nine, which means because they died already. Amen. Which amen. So which means that that those that that also died before they were able to receive the message or hear the message. It's possible for them to make it into the kingdom. They're Amen. Because they're not held accountable. Amen. You yeah. know what Ellen White says in Matthew 26? It always, but praise, these things are nice. In Matthew 26, if y'all know the, I'm, I'm assuming everybody knows. In a parable when Christ says, you've done this unto the least of one of these, my brethren. She took that and she says, this is showing those who didn't know Christ at all. They didn't know him and they make it to heaven. And then she said, it also shows people who knew nothing. Of, they don't know God, but they lived according to what nature teaches them. They live right. They, did, they use the life Christ gave them to do right. So therefore, Christ, yes, he purchased. So they use the life right so he can save them. But we are more rich. They're the real poor ones. We are rich because we know Christ. And with the knowledge that we have of Christ, we live like the heathen. Yeah, you can't. You can't judge them. We live like heathen even though we have a knowledge of Christ. So what does that teach us? Here's what it teaches. We're in a worse condition than those who didn't know him. Why? Because we are harder to save. We're so hard to save. The Lord couldn't give us that lot. The lot he gave us is to know him to, to make it easier for us to be saved. Is everyone following? A lot. Of, there's a, so much that goes into the plan of salvation. And we're so privileged by God to be learning about this plan of salvation. We're so privileged. There's a lot that goes into it. A lot is tied up into saving men, and the Lord is really helping us. But I love what Rashad says, because that's literally what Matthew 26 teaches. But I want to add a part to that. As you were speaking, it came to me. Ellen White says, not only will we, will we be judged for the light that we have, but for the light we what? Could. So they are going to be punished for that light, because they could have had it. So some people that could have had it, they are going to suffer what, what they could have had. But then it fits for the righteous. The righteous, because they're studying, they're looking at the light they could, because she says the, the prophets, they desired. Daniel wanted to know. Mm -hmm. Daniel said, Lord, what, what, what's the end of these things? They're going to get it. Because they have a, they hunger it, they died with a hunger and a thirst for Christ's righteousness. So Christ is going to fill them in the second, in the first resurrection. He's going to give them what they died longing for. So they actually get to have it. But the wicked who didn't want it and could have had it, they're still going to get it. But on the, yeah, and given to those that have not. So it's really nice with the Lord. There, a lot goes into the plan of salvation. And we are privileged to be, to, to share with Christ in this information. But what do we do with this information after we leave here? That's, that's what matters. What do we do with this information? Is this information going to change my life? Is it going to make me live right? Because it's really designed to make us live right. Or, is it gonna make, or am I going to leave here and continue in the same state of mind 
I came with before this. That's terrible. To leave the same way you came after receiving this information, that's really horrible. You, you're making, we're, we would make the second death hotter. We're making it hotter for ourselves. We're basically pouring water on ourselves and that fire is going to burn a little longer. Is everyone following? The reason why we have to teach this, because literally this is the message of the second of the close of probation. That's why we have, men, have to, men have to see this. We have to see this. Go ahead. Amen. That's what makes this all the more important. important. Amen. Understanding what Christ did, what he died for, what he to save you from, for, what he's trying to save you from, and knowing full well that the time when that grace is going to run out is right there. Amen. It's it's much more important now. Amen. To make a change and to accept this thing than, 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 than Amen. And what is the change the Lord's wanting us to make after we leave here? Learn of me. That's what he said. If, if, come, come on to me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you as take my yoke upon you and what? Learn of me. Learn about these things. Early this week, I, I love Val's testimony the other day. Um, the presentation I was brought for um, by Swinnett, it encouraged us. She wants to now go do what? Learn. That's the spirit that we should have when we leave this place. We want to go learn. And I, I encourage those who are watching, if you didn't follow those presentations, please go back and, 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 and go over them. They were very wealthy information in it um this last week's prophecy seminar has a wealth of information i'll encourage those watching if you weren't able to follow all week please go and when those videos go up go and gather it because there's a lot of wealthy information that we need to have not just good thoughts but thoughts that we need to have in preparation for the scenes that's just before us right, next part of the reading but i like the thoughts keep the thoughts coming because this this article really did the same thing i want to share a part with you in reading this article when I was going through it, I literally, I got up from reading it right before worship, and I'm like, Lord, where do I begin? So much thoughts was flying into the mind, I didn't know what to do. I'm like, Lord, what do I teach my family? I, I don't, I, this article really genuates life. That's what I want to get to. Life comes out of, truth generates life. Life is knowledge. And when you read this article, a whole bunch of knowledge starts pouring into the mind. I'm like, and from there, I'm like, Lord, you and you inspired this man to write this thing. Your spirit went into this man and he wrote what you gave him. And, I, and, and that's why I want to encourage us to read this article. It's a lengthy article, but it's, it's, it's worth the read um, as we go through it. But I got up from that and I said, Lord, what do I now teach my family? And then the thought came, just bring in right where you stop. And that's why I started with my, fa with, with my family. And it was a blessing. It was a real blessing. And, you know, we really learned something. As he went, this article is really a beautiful article, and I, and I, I can't stress reading it. I, 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 I think I, that day I said, Lord, I'm going to encourage a lot of people to read this. I want to um, encourage many, every Seventh-day Adventist should read this article because it's, it's, the information it has is really for the Day of Atonement. I mean, he wrote it for the Day of Atonement. And, um, and the reason, um, I, talking to Swin and, and the Lord just poured in more thoughts, and just, and just so much thoughts came out of it. But the one reason um, I knew it was connected because Lissa was watching a study that, that we had done. And um, she says, Daddy, I want to learn about the judgment of the living. You know, and, and like, what can you tell me about the judgment of the living? I'm like, Lissa, basically, where do I start? You know, and I'm like, you know, I want to learn about it myself because that's our experience. So I, I didn't know what to say to her at the time because I know what we taught in the past. But what we taught in the past is just telling us where it's coming. You know, that it's at the Sunday law. And, and, the, and we need to be, yeah, we need to know that, obviously. We need to know that it's at the Sunday Law. But what is it itself? What's going to happen there? What's going to take place? What information do I need when I come there? I didn't know what to say to her. And I said, Lord, I need to understand this because this is what we're actually going to go through. And I said, where do I begin? Well, something said begin in Leviticus 16. So I went to Leviticus 16. And what the Lord showed, Leviticus 16 and Leviticus 23 is teaching you two different things about the judgment of the living. It's the same thing. But they're teaching two different things. If you read Leviticus 16, it's telling you the responsibility of the high priest and the ministers that Christ appointed on earth. If you read Leviticus 23, it's telling you about the body, the people, the church. So 2016 is about the head and 23 is about the body. Is everyone following? Mm -hmm. So when you read 23, the information, if you're a member of Christ's church, chapter 23 is the most important thing for you. But we're all members of his church. But if Christ has appointed you as a minister, you better understand Leviticus 16. 
Is everyone following? Because Aaron had to minister to his family. Whoever God has appointed as leaders in his church, Leviticus 16 is very important for them to understand because that chapter begins by saying, you better not serve the people strong drink. Are you following? If you're a minister and you're giving the people strong drink, the day that begins, you're going to die. So you know what that means? We're going to see many Seventh-day Adventists drop dead at the beginning of the judgment of the living. Many of them. They're just going to die. Because what is it teaching you? The close of probation. The close of probation. As soon as it goes forth, many of them are just going to die right where they're preaching. Right? Because that's what happened in Leviticus 16. They offered wine and they died right there where they were offering. So that's the warning for leaders. If you're in a leadership position and you don't understand that when the judgment of the living begins and you're offering strange wine, you are literally, I'm not talking spiritual, you are literally going to die. That's how the chapter begins. Yeah, and some people are going to receive the, 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 the strong delusion as well. And, and they're, that one, Ellen White says, they don't even die the first plague or the second plague or the third plague or the fourth. They're going all the way to the, to the second coming of Christ. Christ is going to deal with them personally. Is everyone following? That fire is going to burn them up. That's how fearful this thing really is. That's how fear. But 23 now is dealing with the members who are not leaders, who are not in leadership position. And it says they need to afflict their souls. And all who don't afflict their souls, they will die. They'll be cut off. And, it will be, and Ellen White said it had been better that they had not been born. Had been better that they hadn't been born. So it's just as fearful for the members as much as it is for the leaders at the same time. So, it, 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 and so I went to go read that and then I, I typed in atonement and then this article came up and from that I was like, Lord, praise God, you led here. I, I know you led here because the information it has is exactly what I, I needed in, or, in, in order to help um, the question that was asked. What about the judgment of the living? This is what this article is really dealing with. And we need to understand the state of man in order to properly and correctly enter into the job. I mean, I'm not, my plan is not to get through all of this article because that part we can read on our own. But as the thoughts come out, this is what I, you know, I was praying for. I'm like, Lord, let the thoughts fly out. So that way we can, sh we can see how lively this article really is and the information that it gives to us so that we can understand the work of the plan of salvation a little better. Amen. Okay. Next reader, please. The first penalty, or the death to inflict, is unconditional. There were no conditions or provisio attached to the penalty. The language in which it is expressed excludes the possibility of pardon, without setting the, the law and its penalty aside. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. For thus thou art, and unto thus thou shalt return. It is inflexible. It must have the life of its victim. Does anyone understand that? Simple, right? God can't reverse that one. Because he told Adam straightforward, the day you eat, the day you die. So he can't reverse it. it the word's already gone out of his mouth. But however, the Lord made provisions to live in this death condition. And he says, Adam, here's how I want you to live. By the sweat of your brow, you're going you're gonna to eat bread. This is how I want you to live in this state of life. And teach this to your children because this is the condition that your children is going to live in for the rest of until probation closes. And then he says, woman, here's your curse. In this life, I want you to I want you to submit yourself to the husband. It doesn't say it there, but that's what it says in Ephesians. That was her. It says your husband shall rule over you. This is your lot. You have to submit to this position, to this state of living until when? Till the close of probation. You have to stay in this condition until you die. Stay like this. So what is Satan going to come and do? Make men leave that position. Mm -hmm. That's what he's going to do. The new temptation is to make men not work by the sweat of the brow. Make their money, make money. Not them go out and make money, make their money. So what does it set in? A love for money. Laziness. Laziness. And what does that bring? Idleness. And what does that bring? Sodomy. Mm -hmm. Sodom was a, just a bunch of people not fulfilling that command. The bread of idleness. And then when you look at the woman, the papacy is just the woman not submitting herself to the nation. She wants to rule the nation. So she's just rebelling against the first command that the Lord gave after sin. This is what I want. This is how I want men and women to live. In, in other words, the sin is the perfection of Adam. 
Amen. 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 But because wicked men and us too, because we're 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 not exempt from that. Uh, our, the things we did in life also is going to bring things later on in life. It may not come upon us. The story of David teaches that lesson. The things I do in life, it may not come upon me, but it will come upon my children. Yeah, somebody else is going to pay for it. So the wrongs that I did today, the fruits is going to come later. I may bear some of it like Jacob or, it may, or the Lord may cause it to fall on somebody else if we're like David. But it's coming and there's nothing we can do about it. So why am I saying that? Saying that? Because now to have life, this is a new currency Swinton was talking about. By the sweat of your brow, you're going to eat this bread. So if we want life at the Sunday law, it's going to be a terrible test. Yeah, in a, yeah, yeah, amen. Perfect obedience in order to continue to eat the bread that's going to come at the Sunday law. But praise God, if we're training to live that way now, it should be easy for us to work that way then. Amen. Amen. Remember where we start, how we started. The experience that God's people is going to go through, Christ teaches them by examples and parables. Before the real experience comes, Jesus doesn't change. He never changed. And praise God for that. Before the real Sunday law test comes, Christ is always going to give his people an experience in that before the actual one really comes. And that's what we're going through. Amen. That's what we're going through. We're going through a type of it. So when the real one comes, we would have gained an experience. With, but unfortunately, those who are not studying this message, they're not gaining that experience. And they're not learning what the Lord, but the, God knows that. He knows that. Amen. There you go. God knows that that's true. So the civil Sunday law comes to those people. And they get an opportunity to now go through that experience just before the Sunday law. They get an opportunity to go through it. So, so, but they, the same information we're getting, they themselves is going to have to get. Let's continue with the next reading, please. Amen. And I don't think I put this one in there. Now I understand why babies can be saved. There's no sins for them to pay for. They paid for Adam's penalty. But what sin did they commit? So how can they go to the second death? <laughs> Y'all following? How can they go? They can't go. Yeah, they can't. <laughs> Amen. So they, they, there's, nothing, there's nothing they can, and he talked about it, in, but I don't think I put it in there. But in it, when you read it, you'll see. He talks about that. It says infant. This is why I infants can be saved. Amen. You Only for it. Abortion to try to make the world think that, that because it, it, it appalls Christians. It makes it make people think that what is this wicked act? But in that, God is saving. The Lord is saving God them. Is saving them. Yeah. yeah. There's going to be a lot of saved people. Yeah, a lots of people are really going to be. Why, why are they going to be saved? Because they're going to take the place of all of those who, who grew up to that and should have gotten it. Yeah. And because what it says, your children will get it. Isn't that what he says? Yeah. Yeah. Your children will get it. And it, go read that chapter. It says, because they, did, they didn't know the sin that you did. It says it in there. It says it in there. The Lord told, it says, your children didn't know what you knew. And so, therefore, I will take them in, but you are going to die in the wilderness because you know so much. And with the so much I've given you, you still want to go eat the leeks and onions of Egypt. You still want to go eat it. So I'm going to take your children into the kingdom. Amen. So I was like, praise a lot of people is going to really be in heaven. Lots of people going to be in heaven. So Satan thought that he reduced the number. No, he actually increased the number. He increased it. But man, what, what position are we in, though? Terrible. You know, what position are we? Because we know this. You know, we have a knowledge of this. And, and let's not allow children to take our crowns. Let them get their crown because they're going to get it anyway. But let's not allow our crowns to be taken. Amen. Amen. They go through it and they choose to. They choose to go through it. So I, I, I praise God. Next reading. <coughs> so what, what's the name of it? Say it again. Original and Okay, all right. Amen. All right. The penalty of the law of God for a personal sin. Oh, I skipped it. Yeah, I skipped it. It says, the death being entailed upon the, the human family by the first parents or by, or by an act over which they had no control. They are not personally responsible. This brings me to notice. Speaking of, of children. Amen. Okay, he was. It's yeah. in there then. Yeah, All right, there. praise God. 
I didn't know if I put it in. Next one, please. Let me read the next one? Yeah. Okay. It says, the penalty of the law of God for personal sin, it is death. Both testaments represent man as being exposed to death for personal sin. But, in as, in as much as all die for original sin, none can die for personal sin without a resurrection to the second life. Hence, Amen. the Bible teaches that there will be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and the unjust. To, to be preceded by a second life, it must, in nature of things, be a second death. Hence, while the penalty for personal sin is only one death, yet in reference to its relation to the penalty for original sin, it will be a second death. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. When I speak of this death as a second death, I wish to be distinctly understood as having no reference whatever to the nat to the nature of the pers of the penalty for personal sin, but only its relation to a previous death. This must be the only sense in which the Bible speaks of it as a second death. Amen. You know, Amen. I still need to understand that a little bit. I, I, I got it a little better. Saying, yeah. But it takes a little because the second death is only second because of its position. Amen. Yeah. Not in relation to what it is. First Adam, second Adam. Yeah. yeah. So I, I still want to This should have never been a second Adam. I still want to no. understand that a little better though. Amen. You was going to say something, Romario? Okay, does anyone know, what, I, I, I like that as he was reading, uh, that answers, this clears up something else, at least for me. <laughs> yeah. why, can't you, why can't you pay for personal sins? Why can't you pay for it? You didn't die yet. Mm -hmm. You're still living. Mm -hmm. You can't pay for it. Yeah, yeah. it. How can you pay for it when you're still living? It's appointed unto man once to what? Die, die. then the second the death. Sin. Then the death. You have to finish the life first. We're living under the conditions of the, the first sin, the original one. Yeah. And in this one, because Adam, the, the test was easy then. The easy test was just don't eat from the tree. That's it. But in the second probation, the test is different. Husband, what does it say? Husband, by the sweat of your brow, this is the conditions for the, to live in this life. Yeah. By the sweat of your brow. If you do this, this is the cross. that, that cr The father and the son chose this cross for the second probation. This is the cross. And he says, woman, submit yourself to your husband. This is the cross for the second probation. If you can live this way until you die, you escape the second death. If you can live this way until you die, if, if man, if man, if you can live by the sweat of your, if you can live working and providing and eating bread naturally and spiritually, you escape the second death. Women, if you sorrow, you bring forth children, you take care of the home. And you obey your husband and you do what you're supposed to do. You escape the second death. When you die, there's a period of time, a thousand years. What's that thousand years for? To investigate why they're going to die the second death. Yeah. Why? What did they do in their life that makes them worthy of the second death? So that period of time is there to help the righteous understand why they're going into the lake of fire. This is why they're going to. But the second death can't happen while you're alive. It just makes sense. Because your personal sins didn't stop yet. It stops when you die. Your day ends when you go to sleep. So your day, your life, when your life ends, now you can pay for it the day you wake up. Everything you did the day before, you pay for it in the day you wake up. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. So what? So our natural life literally teaches us that there is a second death and a second life. Our natural life really teaches that. It really does. And this is what Satan wants to hide from people. Because if he hides this from people, here's what happens if he hides it from people. They're going to live for this life. But if people become aware of this, whoa, I have a life to escape and I have a life to gain. I, I, I better take care of this life because... There's a life to gain after this because nature teaches me every day I go to sleep, it teaches me there's another day. And by, and by the grace of God, if I get to wake up that day, praise God. But how do you wake up? Based upon what you did the day before. If you, if you drank alcohol, then the second day, it's horrible. But if you live the day innocently, then the next day you're refreshed. You actually wake up refreshed. And you're ready to, to tackle that day. Okay, so now... That doesn't make sense because this verse says this. 
It says the soul that sinneth, it Amen. shall die. Amen. The son shall not bear the, the iniquity of the father. Amen. Ah, uh, Adam and the children. Exactly. Yeah, that's Adam, nice. Amen. Son, Amen. Ah, uh, Adam can't pay for your personal sins, exactly. and you can't. No, that. Yeah, that's you. Amen. But because he sinned, you now die, die. Um, your own sin. A, a, amen. Yeah. For your own penalty. Yo, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But now, because you sin, you now have to die for your sin. Amen. So then you, you die because of the first sin and the last sin. Amen. Your sins as well. So now this verse makes much more sense to me. Okay. You know why? You know why this is important. What we're learning that means there's a deception that Satan is bringing in regards to death. Yep. And if we don't understand this concept. It's going to swallow us up. The, 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 the deception, he because he has a secret weapon about death that he's going to bring to scare people to receive the mark of the beast. Amen. And if we don't understand the true relation between death and life, we're going to receive. I'm telling you, Advent, we think that all we need to know is Sabbath and Sunday. It's a lot more. To, it's, it's, it is Sabbath and Sunday. But there needs to be a temptation to make you go away from Sabbath to Sunday. Something needs to come to tempt you to make you believe you have to give up the Sabbath and accept Sunday. And what's going to come is you're not going to die. Or you are going to die. You're not going to die if you keep Sunday or you're going to die if you keep the Sabbath. So there's a powerful delusion that Satan is about to bring in regards to death. And understanding the truth before he brings it is going gonna, is gonna to be very rewarding. But if the truth is not a part of your life, then it's not going to really avail you anything so remember there's one thing the lord's every truth he teaches us there's a life in it Amen. there is a life and the life is a principle there's a like remember there's a principle in whatever he's teaching us that if we if we can find it because christ says narrows the way that leadeth to life and few there be that find that hidden principle if we find that principle to the truth in which we're learning then we'll have life no matter what even if you fall even if you fall what does the bible say because the principle is in you have to rise again is everyone following? You, because the principle is in you, you got to rise again. A just man falls seven times, but he's going to rise because the principle, he can't fall. The Lord's going to cover him. Amen. But if you don't find that principle, you can't rise again. Amen. And it is found, it is found with um, Christ. It, with Christ, because Christ. He rose said, again. I have the keys of hell and death. Amen. When you have that key, that is... Man, that's your life. That that, um, that's that light on um, on darkness, uh, death. Yeah, yeah, death. That that how long is that? That we all must see so that death won't have any power over you. Amen. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. What's your service? One. One minute. All right, we'll start right here. We'll start right here, and where do we stop? Yeah, it's the same page same heading yeah on the same heading. all right we'll stop right here we'll stop here and by the grace of god come back in the next 15 shall we pray heavenly father lord truly you are here with us on um, this morning for lord these things that we're learning flesh and blood can't really teach these things to us oh lord we're learning something that that's that's divine in nature because sin hides death from view the very first sin was the, the very first temptation. In that temptation, um, death was hidden from Adam and Eve. And, and you had to show them that death is a real thing and life is also a real thing. And Lord, as you're helping us to understand this, Lord, as, this, as you're making us aware of this information and this knowledge, please help us to live the life of this knowledge, O oh Lord. I pray that by beholding that we will become changed into the same image of your Son and that we will receive the very life that you've placed into these truths for us to receive. Please forgive us of our sins and we ask that you will create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us. And Lord, we, we, one thing we understand, Lord, that that which you're helping us to understand, the wicked one's going to come and try to snatch away the truth. Please help us to be on our guard so that these things will not slip from our minds. Help us not to be a leaky vessel, but to be a vessel that can hold and retain the water. And by your mercies, may you increase our knowledge and understanding in these things as we continue to go forward. Please continue to bless the remaining portions um, that we will have with each other throughout the Sabbath. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.